The weekly closes are in, and you know that means it is time for Trade Cave's weekly closes roundup on all of our favorite Bitcoin miners. So let's get right into it today, starting with Iren. Iren, we got this big, ugly red candle here, 18 minus 18.1% percent here but we are still just trailing along the top of the average true range bands here this is actually one of my favorite new indicators that i have been using i've really been liking it i've been using it for a lot of pretty good trades lately anyways we're, we're just skating along the top of this thing the middle point of the average true range bands is this yellow one here and that is at eight dollars and 71 cents now that is an area that if price closes beneath this red band, it will likely come back down to this yellow band. As you can see here, right, it closed up above it, right, came below, and then right to the yellow one, even a little bit lower. Back here in uh, July 2023, same thing, closed above it, came back inside of it, went straight for the yellow one. In that case, it went almost down to the little blue one down there. So, you know, watch out for that. Back here, right, it went up above it, came right back down to the yellow one. Up above it, right back down to the yellow. It likes to do that on these average true range bands. So I wouldn't be surprised if at some time, the next three to four weeks, we'd see this thing back down at the yellow mark here, and it'll hang out down there until around the you know Christmas time when this thing takes off again. So that's what I'm looking at here. The weekly close is a bit ugly, but not the worst. It's still bullish, honestly. As long as it stays above this yellow line here, it is bullish. It is bullish. And we'll do actually I'll do a whole video about the average true range bands here pretty soon because it's I, I've really been enjoying the average true range bands. They've been really good for me, helping me get in and out of trades uh, carefully and with greater accuracy than what I was doing before. Anyways, let's move on to BitFarms. What is BitFarms looking for on looking like on the weekly? Let's turn off some of these drawings here. Okay. So on the weekly chart, we are currently hanging out around the midpoint here. Now, as long as we're above this yellow band here, as I said, as long as we're slightly above or on it, because right now we're kind of on it. It's at 254. We're at 253. But as long as we're on it, we are in a bullish area and we will likely move up, up towards the red band and kind of bounce between the red and the yellow until we break the yellow and then the blue band comes into play potentially. So we are looking for that move up on this thing right now. Actually, this, this looks like a bull flag right here. This looks like a bull flag right there on BitFarms. If we can stay above two dollars and fifty cents so as long as we can stay above two dollars and fifty cents we could likely see this thing go higher than this previous high here at 329 real fast and that would be pretty amazing honestly now this this body's not great it's minus 5.24 percent i really want to see it get up and above two dollars and 74 cents before i'm feeling good about it clearing three dollars right now so it does look like a bull flag okay it does I like this long wick on the bottom here. We got wick on the bottom this week as well. If we get a green candle next week and it within like the next two weeks close above that $2.74, I'd be looking for it to take out this previous high over here up above 328 and potentially even run for like 366, maybe even take a take a run for, you know, take a jab at $4 potentially. That would be really cool uh, for Bit Farms. I know I'd be pretty happy about that. I've got a few thousand shares of this. That'd be a lot of money. <laughs> so that is BitFarms. Let's take a look at BitDigital. BitDigital has been on a tear lately. This thing is crazy. Um, you can see it's been up three weeks in a row pretty big. This week it was up 6.44%, like 7% of that was just today. Uh, it, was, it was a pretty, today, yesterday, <laughs> the thing was up big time. Man, ah, it was just so good. It was really good. Okay, anyways. We are looking for this thing. Honestly, I want to see this make a run for that $6 mark. I want to see Bit Digital hit $6. I want it to hit the top of this trend line that we have here. So now it doesn't mean it has to. Now it might only come up to, let's say, 485, you know, start turning around. Okay, it could do that. It could do that. But right now I'm not seeing weakness. I'm seeing strength. Now let's take a look at the indicator turn that on all right we aren't even to the red band yet and look sometimes it goes out and above it and stays above it for two three weeks four or five weeks at a time we haven't even gotten to it yet and the lowest we're likely to go is 284 give this thing two more weeks above 350 this yellow band will be at three bucks and we aren't going to be going back below three bucks once that yellow band is there at least not until we make a new high that's my thought process on bit digital right now i think that we are going to stay between uh right now between four dollars four and three dollars until we see a new high unless something bad happens with bit digital 
which could happen. It could happen and end up just crashing. Um, like if we broke this trend line right here, like if we broke this one right here, yeah, we're going to have a bad time and come back all the way down here to like 150, which would be really traumatic for uh, you know a lot of us, <laughs> me included. I would be losing money at that point. My average is about $2.60 on BitDigital. So yeah, I'm looking for it to stay above this white line. As long as it's above this white line, and honestly, as long as it's above $3, I'm feeling bullish on it. I think that it's going to be bouncing around in between this red and yellow line for a while. Just like back here. Like, look back here. See this? See this back here? Last year from March all the way until it breached uh, in May. Like, it just kind of went in between the red and the yellow. In between the red and the yellow. And then it just got real fast at the end there. I don't think we're quite at this end mark yet. I think we've got, like, another two, three weeks before we're really like launching off now of course i might be wrong it might it might just launch off tomorrow who knows tomorrow but monday who knows um but that's what i'm looking at with bit digital right now i'm feeling very bullish about this thing right now as you can hear from how i'm talking about it all right let's take a look at clean spark clean spark the weekly on clean spark not great it's not great now oh look at this just two weeks ago we got a golden cross that that green x down there that means that we got the 50 cross up over the 200 that's actually pretty good even though we came down <laughs> now we are below that yellow line and we've been going largely sideways. Below the yellow line, like I said before, we could see it come down to the blue line. In this case, that would be $9.21. I don't really think that's going to happen with CleanSpark. I think CleanSpark has been held down by dilution for the most part because they've been, I mean, there's been days where it should have gone up and it really just didn't. We are making a huge, huge, I say, bullish pennant right here. I'm looking for this big old bull flag, basically, to break out of this channel. When it breaks out of this channel, as you see right now, like it's just been wicks coming out of here. No candles opened and closed outside of this downward channel. When it does, when it does, this thing opens us up all the way up. Now let's let me turn off this indicator because this is just gonna get in the way now. This opens us all the way up to about forty dollars. As soon as we get out of this and we clear this this level here, like this twenty one thirty six, if we clear this solidly and we we get above the brim of this big cup right here this big mega giga cup i like to call it this cup right here once we get once this flag gets out and we break here right we break that then we come to this level right here as soon as that's broken moon 40 bucks here we come uh that's what i'm looking for on clean spark right now i want to see it break out of this descending channel when it does i'm gonna get real real excited because it's going to happen fast when it does. It's going to break out of this thing. It's going to test this, this high right here at 2136. It might flutter there for a moment or two, and then it's going to breach that. And when it breaches that, it's really going to fly like back here, like back here. So it's, it's going to look exactly like when it happens. I think it's going to look exactly like this formation back here. You see how we came down, scooped, did a handle, did a real ugly handle. Things look pretty dire right there. And then it came up, right? Did a little, got a bit hairy there. And then the next week it just went by all the way up to 40 bucks in how what amount of time one two three four five weeks in five weeks it moved from 11.99 to 40 what to 42 almost 43 dollars i think we're going to do the same thing on clean spark coming up in the next um couple of months or so so keep your eyes on this formation this thing's going to be crazy and that might even be 2024 2025 i mean could if when, when Bitcoin hits its ultimate high. I mean, we could, this thing could be trading in the $60, $70, $80 range. Uh, we've talked about this before on the previous video. Go watch the Wind Moon for uh, Clean Spark or the Clean Spark Millionaire video, and you will see what I think about Clean Spark and what it can do. Let's go take a look at Mara right now. So, Mara, a lot of people getting fed up with Mara right now. I don't think you should be, though. I don't think you should be getting fed up with Mara right now. Mara is still in this as big ascending channel here, and it is consolidating hard right here between. Uh, $22.75 and $19.80. It's been consolidating hard in that range there. We are coming up like this. Take a look. Take a look. All right. So we got this trend line right here, right? This trend going up like this, and then it's going flat pretty much right here at $21, right? That little formation right there, very, very bullish. If So if it breaks beneath that, yeah, we're going to have a bad time. We're going to come all the way down to $14.65 again before we find support and maybe even lower, okay? If it breaks below it, all right? I don't think it's going to, though. Don't think it's gonna, especially look at this, look at this candle this week. Look at the candle this week. Whoops. Look at the candle for this week. So it is 
looking a little bit like a bullish candle here. So it's a bit of a doji still, but a lot the bulls fought it all the way up from 1870, all the way up back over $20 just this week. We got a little wick on top. If we can close above 2127, I'll be feeling pretty good about it moving back up to 2275. 2275 is an area of significant resistance that this thing needs to get above. And when it does, when it does, it unlocks potential to go all the way back up into the mid 30s, potentially, again, just like clean spark up into the 40s, like this formation right here. And this consolidation that we've been seeing since April could send us into the 40s, potentially even higher on Marathon Digital. I don't think you should be getting tired of Marathon Digital yet. I think it's just preparing for its big move. Notice how no one's really been talking about Mara for a little while. Mara itself has been pretty quiet about just about everything. They're like, oh, yeah, we started mining Caspa. You know, it's a thing that we're doing. And that's all they've really told us in quite some time. They've got something brewing and they are waiting for the right moment to unleash this market on it. Um, and I'm, I, I personally am just holding what I have for Mara right now. I'm, I might consider adding, actually, uh, but I'm pretty tapped out right now. I'm waiting for Mara or Iron to come down to pick some of that up to get a bag there. I'm not really adding to my current bags right now. I want to make new bags. Anyways, Mara, I like where it's sitting right now. I think it has potential on this weekly chart. Let's bring up the indicator. All right, average to range. So we are below this yellow line here. See how I noticed? See, see the 2275? So it's 2252 here. It's, it's changed a little bit. The average true range bar, it gets above that. It gets ultra bullish. Unlocks us all the way up to like that 3052 and beyond here on the average true range bar. Now, as long as we stay, like I said, if we stay above the current trend, upward trend, the current upward trend, which is this line right here, basically that white one I just put on there, we stay above that. We're doing good. We can get above this and we get above this yellow line. We're going to be having a really, really good time. We break below that. We could potentially come to 14 and maybe even as low as $10.18. That would be like the craziest worst case scenario for Mara right now. But I like where it's sitting on the weekly. Let's take a look at Riot. How is Riot doing on the weekly? Riot is doing bad. All right. Well, they are in this downtrend again, though. Riot. It's not. I mean, the candle, the candle is not the worst thing I've ever seen. Like the, it, the bears pushed it down to 893. It pushed itself back up to 981. It really needs to get over $10, honestly, um, to get back into bullish territory. It needs to get over that 1176. And then it opens this up to about $16. Honestly, on Riot, unless they come out with like some crazy good news, I don't really see them breaking above this red line here right now, which is currently at $16 and falling. Okay. They are in something of a falling wedge right now. Something of a falling wedge pattern right there. Eh, it's not a great one, but a very tiny one right there. More, more of a descending channel, honestly, uh, which isn't great. And it's having a real tough time breaking out of that. A lot of it is bad press. A lot of it is their own fault. Um, and they are in bear territory right now. But if you, if you look back on the chart back here, just in October of last year, right, it goes from bear to bull real fast. You get like in a two week period, it just like one, two weeks of indecision, and then like one little week of move up. And then it just ran all the way up to the red line here. So we could go from 981 to 16 in one, two, three, four, in about four, four and a half weeks. We could see that happen real fast. I mean, in the case of February, it did it in two weeks. It went from $10.24 all the way up to $18.25 in two weeks. And that was it. That was the whole move. That was it. And I mean, back here in July of last year, it went from eleven eighty six all the way to $20.62 again in two weeks without stopping. So, I mean, this thing has the power. It can make those kinds of moves. It is being suppressed right now. A lot of it is their own fault. Not going to lie. A lot of it is their own fault. They got to get some stuff together um, before that uh, is really interesting, uh, before anything really interesting is going to happen. Um, the clouds up here, I wouldn't expect it to get up to these clouds again until like Bitcoin is fully in its bull run. Uh, right now, I'm looking just at the ATR bands on these things for now. So that is right. Let's take a look now at um, Core Scientific. Core Scientific hasn't been around long enough <laughs> to get that on the daily chart. Hasn't been around long enough on the daily chart. Okay, so it is way outside the ATR bands. The red band is at $8.31. The central band is at $5.83. I don't know what to say about that on the weekly. Honestly, I think we got to go down to like a two day. Yeah, we got to go down to about a two day. OK, maybe three. Maybe we can do it on a three day. Like a little more than half a week. No, two day. Two days. Got to be two day. Give me at least something reasonable to look at. So we're right on the red line here. We could come down to the yellow. The yellow line is at eight dollars and twenty four cents. OK, eight dollars and twenty four cents. We can come all the way down to there and that 
look look how it so nicely aligns with the bottom of this uh, candle here from June 22nd at uh, 831 to 824. That, that range right there, it gets below that. We're coming down um, to like $6 if it gets below that. So keep that in mind. Now, we could come there, bounce off of it, and we're still very bullish if we do that. If we slice through it, we're coming down, we're coming down hard on core scientific. And that's just because it's gone up so dramatically that, uh, I mean, there's not much holding it up here. So if it doesn't create strength where it currently is, uh, it will you know, fall into weakness. And that will take us down to that $6 level on core scientific if that were to happen. Now, it doesn't look bad right now. This does look like a bull flag. And if it closes up above 1056, I mean, we could run anywhere. I have no idea where it could run from there. I, I don't really know what to say about Core Scientific. This thing's crazy. It's just running. Uh, let's take a look at Wolf. So we just did Core Z. We're going to look at Wolf now. So Wolf here on the weekly is way out of bounds on the ATR bands. Uh, and you can see it doesn't really stay out of the ATR bands for a real long time. Like if it does, like it did back here in January 2021, which is like really the last time it was like wildly outside of the, the bands like this, it tends to go sideways for a bit and consolidate before launching off again. So it could totally do something like that right now, where it just goes sideways for a while, staying above the red band and then going sideways until it comes the yellow meets it up here at like four or five dollars. Could do something like that. Um, but Generally, I like to see it fall down. In this case, I'd want to see it come down to 383, which by the time it got there, it would probably hit the yellow band there. And um, you can also see it back here, right? I don't want to see this back here, right? Where it came up, it was above for two weeks, hung on above it, and the third week it dove below it. And then the next week it came to the yellow band. And then the week after that, it dove below the yellow band. And then it opened the next week under the yellow band. And from there, you knew it was going down to the blue band. That's the kind of movement I don't want to see, which is from here back in July of last year. And we could totally see that one more time, you know, going before into Q4, like we could see like September, October, this come all the way down and see it like at $2 again. It, I mean, it's happened to all the other miners. Why not Wolf? Uh, so it could happen. So be aware of that. If you're buying right now, you might be buying the top. And I mean, I mean, this is a red candle. It's got a nice long wick on top. Uh, I mean, sorry, on the bottom. So it's not the worst thing I've ever seen, but I do want to see it come all the way down to 468 right now before this price makes any sense whatsoever. And I would want to see it at least go sideways there, if not come all the way back down to about 383, where it would meet this middle line here, the, the yellow line uh, in a couple of weeks. Uh, that would be the only way the wolf price makes sense, because right now it's way out of bounds and I want to see it reset. I want to see some of these indicators and oscillators reset and then take off from there if it doesn't do an all out fall like it did last July or wolf. Let's take a look at HUT as well. So this is HUT on the weekly. On the weekly, HUT looks not bad. It's not too bad. Um, it is slightly outside of the ATR bands. Okay, so but that's not the worst place. It could stay there for two, three weeks before you know having a fall like it did back here to two weeks above, and then true fell all the way down. As long as it stays above the yellow band, which currently is at eleven dollars twenty-two cents, it remains bullish. Uh, as soon as it falls below the yellow band, uh, the blue band comes into play potentially, uh, or at least it might get close to it. In this case, it might find, you know, $7. It could come down to $7 if it gets below the yellow band, but it doesn't. So let's not talk about that. Uh, so right now I'm looking forward to go sideways. Again, just like Wolf, it's out of bounds right now. It's got to reset. It's got to get itself back to an area where there is enough momentum and liquidity in order to continue to move up. And so it means that means that it needs to do a bull flag at some point. I mean, it could keep running up. Yes. I don't think it will. I think it's going to run out of steam where it currently is because right now we've had, what is this? One, two, three, four, five, six weeks of uninterrupted bull action on HUT. I, I mean, I, I don't see it doing a seventh. All right. <laughs> I see it maybe going sideways. It might go up slightly a little bit and then, you know, start coming back down again, just like it did last July, just like with Wolf, where it came out after July. It went from July all the way into October. And then from October, it started building up again. So I think that's probably what we're going to see here. And this is that summer run that I was talking about. It happened on a good amount of the miners, not all of them. Some of them have been suppressed like CleanSpark and Mara and honestly, right. Uh, but Bit Digital, it got its summer run. Bit Farms, it got its summer run. Iron, Corzy, Wolf, Hut, those all got wicked summer runs. Um, just like I've been saying for a while, the summer run, it got them. It happened for a lot of them. And I would be securing profits if I were in those specific miners. I am looking at where I would consider taking profits on BitFarms and BitDigital right now because they have done their run. I think there's a little more gas in, uh, in their tank for those two to continue to go a little further, but I am starting to look at areas where I'm going to start trying to call a top on those. I am still waiting for CleanSpark and Mara to give me a summer run, Riot 2 to a certain degree. 
I don't know if they will. The summer run might be canceled for them. It might just be coming a little bit later. We'll see. It might be it might be end of July, first two weeks of August for those ones where it's taken off like the like these other ones have been, where they you know they make a hundred percent in two weeks. We'll see. But summer run happened. I'm really happy about that. Actually, it was pretty great. Uh, anyways, so hut. I'm looking at it. I'm thinking it's going to potentially go sideways. I want to see it come back into the ATR bands. Uh, I want to see it come at least down to fourteen dollars and forty two cents. Uh, now, if it breaks out above, if we can break above like 1740, 1750 here, it does have room up to about $22. Uh, if it does want to continue to run, it absolutely could continue to run to like 22 or even a little higher uh, before deciding to come back down like a meteor. <laughs> so, you know, just cratering back to earth after making that epic run. So, play, be careful. I would consider a stop loss at about, hmm, let's look. 1454. Any lower than 1454, I'd be looking forward to come back down to 12, uh, down to $13. Okay, 1454, I'd be looking forward to fall to $13 before recovering, maybe even as low as like 1222 if it breaks beneath 1450. So I, I would probably put a stop loss around that area, around the 1450 zone. I'd be putting a stop loss, thinking it would come to at least $13, maybe even as 1220. Now, if I'm ready to hold for another year, I, I, I'd just leave it, buy more at 1220. I call it a day. Uh, let's look at the last one. Cypher. Very last one on the list here. We got Cypher. I like the Cypher chart. The Cypher chart looks really good. It's been such a healthy move up here. Just constantly train tracks. Just moving on up. Moving on up. Moving on up. With little actions down to keep it healthy. And keep the oscillator. Hey, notice how oscillator has barely gotten on the RSI. The RSI has barely gotten overbought at all. All since October of last year. It only got overbought once since then, and it has been solidly moving up. Let's see. I mean, it's right now it's up 118% with only getting slightly over, so overbought, excuse me. And it's been as high as 173%, and that's not even where it got oversold. It got oversold slightly around like 170%. At 173%, it was still at 66 on the RSI, so this thing's this is ideal. This is what you want to see. This is a beautiful chart. Just hey, hugging this yellow uh, ATR band here, occasionally going up to the red one, coming back to the yellow one, going up to the red one, coming back to the yellow one, and just hanging out on it and just chugging along, going up. Cypher is a beautiful chart. Like, this is a really good chart. And when it breaks above this green line here, that's when pandemonium happens. Right? It's just chugging along, chugging along, chugging along. Institutions buying, 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 buying. Uh, and that's what that looks like, honestly. This is like institutional buying when it's like doing these wide ranges and kind of just always coming back to a baseline and then shooting up, coming back to a baseline and shooting up. Like that's that's a, that, just like with CleanSpark. CleanSpark, that's like institutional buying and dilution. That's what we're looking at here with, with Cypher. And when it gets above this green line, that's when pandemonium happens and it, it's, it's going to shoot up right up to this level right here. When it breaks above that green line, it's going to go up to this dash line here. And in fact, I'm going to make this one orange. Uh, up here, it's going to go shooting right up to that real, real fast, which is going to be $9.84. And then you're going to just going to rip your face off, basically. It's going to make that kind of move. $9.84. It might not stop there, too. It might come all the way up to like 15 bucks doing that move when, when it breaks this green trend line that I've got here uh, for ciphers. Anyways, that is the weekly update for the weekly closes on our favorite Bitcoin miners. Like, comment, subscribe, share this video, and have a profitable day.